Today's video is a two-part series. I had this piece in my store and sold it, and the lady wanted matching pieces for it, but they were a different style. She bought them from my stash. So I had to simulate everything, including the solid surface material top. So this is that uh, Corian or solid surface. So the three pieces had this very slick top. They were Ethan Allen pieces and of course I started by cleaning them. Uh, I'm using a degreaser, um, TSP cleaner called White Lightning from Dixie Bell. So you can see the reflection there, how shiny that this top is. So that means I need this product. It's Slick Stick. And here's a little screenshot of the three pieces. Now, ignore my background because I'm kind of painting wherever I can paint right now. We're in the process of moving our shop. So we are finally able to announce that we're going to the canal shops at the U.S. Hotel in Hollidaysburg, Pennsylvania. So we'll be giving you more details, but I'm pretty excited about it. And so I'm just giving these tops, these shiny tops, a coat of this slick stick. The next step is going to require a couple different colors, so I'm using Black Sands, Oyster, and Wharf in the Silk Mineral line. I'm also using an IOD stamp, and it's the Marble stamp. I give the top a coat of Oyster first. While this color is still wet, I'm using the Wharf color and I'm applying paint on those stamps. So this comes in a whole set um, and I've just kind of taken them apart and just used them individually. Just different um, veins from marble. So like I said, I use it while it's still wet and I'm just going to lay the stamp on there and just get some of these veins on there. Generally, marble is going to run kind of all in the same direction. So I kind of make them all go the same way. But you don't want to make it look like stripes either. So you keep working with it. And there's a couple different... Um, I have about three different of those pieces of the stamp out that I'm using. You can run some sideways. You don't want it to look like X's either, so just kind of make them go generally in the same direction. At least that's what I've found. And then I take some of the black sands. And I'm just taking my brush and doing a nervous line. I misted the surface with a mister bottle of water and I'm taking my same brush and I'm just gently pouncing all over those colors and I don't want it to look like circular dots either so I'm just very lightly doing it 
and just kind of moving all over the surface and then revisiting areas just watching to see if I see that circular motion or if any colors that I have let go too far or want to bring back I add in then after that's dry I am taking some clear coat in satin and I'm just pouring it on and distributing it evenly over the top I continue this process with all three of the tops and here's how they turned out. I have a little before and after picture with the Corian and the faux finish. I'm going to say I nailed it, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments. My method of jumping around might drive people crazy, but I'm taking the hardware off and you can see that they're missing those little caps. So um, I'm going to have to be creative in matching up the hardware to give it the same feeling as the other piece, even though it's a totally different shape and style. This furniture doesn't have um, curvy lines, so we're going to have to add some curves. Now I'm doing a scuff sand on this surface. It's not as slick as the top, but it is a little bit shiny. So I just want to make sure that I am bringing the, that shine down so that my paint is going to have something to grab onto. So I'm using the color Wharf and i'm painting the front here i again my kind of out of order way of doing things but that always is my method i'm so excited about recreating a faux finish that i do the fun parts first and then it seems like there's nothing to it when i have to, i know what i have to finish is just by painting out the rest so that's just my method it might not be everybody's way if you like things a little bit more orderly, but this is how things work in my mind, so... <laughs> I do give it two coats. So I am letting it dry in between, but by the time I get to my third piece, and then I come back to the front, um, it's basically dry. It's dry enough for me to do a second coat. Now when I do faux finishes, sometimes I like the paint to be a little bit wet, and then I kind of let the coats all dry together. So um, I hope that uh, makes sense, but, I have found that silk is kind of like nail polish as I've said before that it dries kind of like top down. So I have seen um, in the past when I've had manicures done, they will do the same thing. They'll put a couple coats on and I'm thinking, oh, don't you have to wait for it to dry? But they put all the coats on and then they dry it. So um, that's just kind of the way I have found I can work with silk. So, um, and if I let this sit for several days, it's going to, uh, be fine. Um, it, it takes a while to cure. So actually 30 days is the cure time, but I don't always have that much time. So I do use a clear coat on it. Um, that way I can move it quicker. So now I am taking conch in silk and I'm just randomly putting some patches on here into that wet paint just work in the front of this piece and by the way I know that I contaminate paints when I do this you can pour it out if you want to but they're my paints so I don't worry about it I'm just dipping into the same jar with the same brush and now I am taking 
the color Harbor. And I'm doing the same random kind of placement of color. I'm using the water mister and I'm not really blending. I'm just kind of working on feathering out those edges. Very light brush. Again, it does kind of blend, but that's not my goal. My goal is just to feather out those edges because uh, some of it's going into the wharf and some of it's going uh, into the conch and the harbor. So just kind of working on that um, in that way. I also begin to spray some hardware. I use the pieces that had the little caps for the drawers and then I'm using some random pieces because remember I want to get a little bit fancy with some of the pieces to kind of bring back this feeling. So I hope you come back next week for part two when I pull it all together and make this unmatched collection of furniture pieces cohesive. Thank you so much for watching today. If you like this video, how about giving it a thumbs up and also share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed, you'll want to do that so you don't miss anything. Visit us at levintagedecor.company and on Instagram we're levintagedecor and on Facebook we're levintagedecor altuna. Stay well.